before you take your seat, I'm going to ask if you would just turn to your neighbor on your left and your right and just say, God's glory is here. God's glory is here. Now turn to your other neighbor and say, I can feel his presence. I can feel his presence. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I know we normally stand and read the word, but I'm going to get into the word in just a moment so you can have your seat. And uh, we thank the Lord. And in the uh, temporary absence of our senior pastor and first lady, we thank God and we praise him for uh, allowing us to, to be here today and to worship him. And the title this morning, if you're taking notes, is God's glory plus the reverence of the believer equals the anointing. Mm. Many people want the anointing. Amen. But they don't want the presence. I'll say that again. Many people want the anointing but they don't want the presence. Come on, come on. How many of us truly hunger after the presence of God? Come on, come on, come on. How many of us get up in the morning and just want to be before the Lord? Amen. I'm ready to go to work. <laughs> Let's look at the meaning of the word anoint. We use it quite a bit. In the Hebrew, the word anoint is masa, which means to rub in. And when you look at the Greek word, it is chrism, and it means to smear. Now, I'm assuming that at some point in your life, you've probably put on some moisturizer on your skin. I hope it's not just me. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, in order for that to happen, you have to get close to your what? Skin. So when we think about the anointing, the anointing is as a result of a closeness. There is something that God wants to gift you and I. But in order for us to receive it, we have to be what? Present. Oh, I think some of you got it. We have to be what? Close. close. We have to be close. You, you know, it might be helpful if you scoot a little closer to your neighbor for this message. You might need to lean on them a little bit this morning. But this morning, we want to have a good understanding of what the anointing is and how it can be applied to our lives. Amen? Amen. So a question, I, and I ask a lot of questions of God. Because in asking questions of God, that is how I gain an understanding. So one of the questions I have is, what exactly is the anointing? And how do we access the power that originates from God? When we receive the anointing, we are in a sense smeared with his power. Which means that he is not only upon us, but within us as oil would be rubbed into and absorbed by the skin. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. Let's look at James chapter 5, verse 14. And the word said, is any one among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to do what? Pray over him and anoint him with what? Oil in the name of the Lord. So there you see the application of oil in the Bible. So we have an understanding that we are actively involved in the process of being the hands and the feet of God. Amen. In Exodus 29, verse 7, 
It reads, then, somebody shout out, then. Amen. You shall take the anointing oil and do what? Pour it on his head and anoint him. And I'm going to go one slide back for just a, well, actually, no, I'll, I'll get there in just a moment. So he, he, here is a question that I have for you. When you think about your relationship with God, is it at the surface level like topical cream? <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody this morning. <laughs> you connected with the Holy Spirit in a deeper and more satisfying way? You, you know, one of the things my wife told me, she said, uh, when you wash your skin a lot, it dries out the skin and you look ashy. That's, that's that Mississippi right there. That's, <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Sometimes I have to tell her, be gentle, honey, be gentle. <laughs> and what happens is when we go through the challenges of life, oh God, sometimes we move away from the presence of God and we focus on the challenges and not realize that our skin is dry. <laughs> And we wonder why we're struggling to deal with the challenges of life. Is there anyone that has been dealing with some challenges this week? Is there anyone who's felt that their skin is dry and they need a fresh touch from God? Is there anyone who says, I don't understand what's going on in my life. I come to church. I go to Bible study. I pray in the morning. I read my devotion, but still. Somebody say, but still, I'm struggling. This is not a word for everybody that has it together. <laughs> if you have it all together, then pray for me. <laughs> yeah, 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 pray for me. No, this is a word for those of us that struggle, that are crawling, that are stumbling, but we made it in here. This is a word for those of us that have questions of God and we don't have all the answers. This is a question for those that were up at two in the morning asking God why. This is for those of us that have a loved one that is sick or under the weather. This is for those of us that have financial challenges and we tied but we're still asking why. It is time for us as believers to connect with God in a deeper way. It is no longer acceptable that connection with God is optional and dependent upon your preference or mood. Sometimes when you don't feel like getting into his presence, when you don't feel like getting into his word, that's when you need it the most. Mm. When we bond with God and we connect with God, then the fresh oil of his anointing mm -hmm. begins to flow. You see, a lot of times when we think about anointing, we think about it as a demonstration. Oh, God. We think about it as theatrics. But when we understand the anointing, the anointing is the manifestation that comes as a result of being in his presence. Amen. When you are in the presence of God, it is like a plane that takes off and you're in the air. There may be some turbulence, but it's steady. It's steady. Let's look at Acts 1 and 8. The word says, but, somebody shout out, but, but. you will receive power. Now we can shout off the word power. But a lot of times we want to stop at the word power. <laughs> we got to press on in. It says what? When. Somebody shout out when. When. 
When the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the Amen. Your anointing is not for you. <laughs> oh, I'm preaching better than you're shouting. <laughs> I said the anointing that God gives you is not for you. The anointing that God gives you is for a missional purpose that God has intended to bless you with. Come on. Promise number one says we shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon us. If we want to understand how to access the anointing, we need to first seek after and hunger after God's presence. In the presence of God, we are rubbed or smeared with his anointing and power, which should produce a hunger or desire to do something. I am always fascinated by people who say they have the anointing and yet they have no hunger to do anything for God. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's like uh, someone that says they're a fan of a team but they don't pull out the jersey until the Super Bowl. <laughs> You ever had any fair weather friends? You ever had anybody they don't come onto your social media feed until you do something great? Huh? But when we hunger after the presence of God, then God begins to gift us with his anointing. Amen. With his anointing. How many of you know we're called to witness and share the good news of the gospel? Mm -hmm. If you hear a good word, a word that changes your life, then you should share it. Is that right? Amen. Let's move on. So remember this. God's presence is not the same as his anointing. God's presence is not the same as his anointing. Rather, it is the manifestation and the result of his presence. Let me say that again. God's presence is not the same as his anointing. It is the manifestation and result of his presence. When you spend time in the presence of God, it's like spending time in the presence of your family. You know, when people see uh, me, a lot of times they say, boy, that you a twin of your daddy. And when I look and I think about it, I say, man, in some ways I can see what you're talking about. <coughs> But it's because I spend time in his presence. How much time do we spend in the presence of God? And do we do it as a routine because we feel it's necessary? Or do we do it because we thirst after righteousness? Do we do it because we need help to make it? Do we do it because we want to have a deeper understanding of how God wants to operate in our lives? I heard a preacher say that at a certain point, you get tired of milk, and you're ready for some meat. <laughs> Amen. Anybody ready for some meat? Anybody ready to go deep in God? Anybody ready to be rooted in Him? <clears throat> Can I go a little further? In the presence of God, we're surrounded with His glory. And the glory of God is important because it allows us to know God's ways. God has a certain way of doing things. Amen. Has anyone ever been a witness to the fact that the way that you may do something is different than the way that God would, <laughs> would, would do? Am I in the right room? Or may, 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 maybe, maybe for you, maybe for you uh, everything that you thought about is exactly the way that... So then I guess the word that says that his thoughts are Oh, come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, we don't just want to have the power without his glory because that can lead to destruction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. How many of you have ever met somebody who seemed to have a power or a gifting, but they weren't connected to the soul? <laughs> Amen. 
Hmm. Well, just in case you can't think of nobody, I, I thought of a couple names for you. Yeah. Samson with Delilah. Oh, Lord. Judges chapter 16 talks about Samson. You know, boy, the Bible can be cold sometimes when you look at it. I was looking at this last night and I was realizing that Delilah, she didn't really love Samson. How are you? And, and I just got a bone to pick, so I got to get it off my chest. How are you going to go to a group of folks that want to kill your man and they're telling you, we're going to pay you to tell us where his strength lies. And you go back and ask him the same question. <laughs> and, then, and then what kind of man is Samson that they're telling you they want to destroy you, but you're like, I know you love me, baby. <laughs> that's, a, that's a problem for me. Uh, it, it, fellas, is it any of you that would say that would be a problem? A problem? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to be on the next 48 hours. Yeah, that's okay. You, you, keep, you keep that. It's okay. May the Lord watch between you and me while we are absent from one another. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. <laughs> and, and Saul was serving as king when David was anointed. Now watch what happens. Saul was in a position of authority. But David was anointed. Oh. Some of you have been anointed and God is about to position you because of your faithfulness. God is about to position you that promotion. God is about to position you that financial breakthrough because you're focused on his presence. You're focused on his anointing. Exodus 33 and 18, Moses says, now show me your glory. Let's say that together. Now show me your glory. One more time. Now show me your glory. Now can you imagine if our prayer if our desire every morning that we get up is, Lord, show me your glory. Yeah. How much different might your life be? Your decisions, your relationships, your conflict, your ability to think through situations, your ability to stand in the face of adversity. When you said, now show me your glory. Yeah, yeah. Exodus 34, 5 through 7 says, Then the Lord came down in the cloud. Don't you love how God responds? Don't you love how God responds to those of us that would call out to see his glory? It says, Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name. And one of the things I love when I look at that is, in order for the Lord to stand there with you, you have to be seeking after his presence. And he passed in front of Moses. Can you imagine the Lord passing in front of you? The Lord is actively involved. The Lord is not sitting in some remote tower somewhere looking down, but the Lord is actively involved Amen. in the lives of those of us who would seek his presence. Amen. It says the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God. Have you ever... Uh, Experience the compassion of God. Mm. Have you have you ever experienced the graciousness of God? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever experienced a God who is slow to anger when you was messing up? You, you took over the same thing that God told you last week not to do, and the week before that not to do, and the month before that not to do, and the year before that not to do. And God is still compassionate and gracious. Because of the graciousness of God. I'm standing here because of the compassion of God. I'm standing here because God looked beyond my thought and saw my need. There is a gift in you. There's someone who feels rejected. 
there's someone who feels like they can't be used by God. But I want you to understand that the moment you say, God, I'm tired, show me your glory. I've done it my way. Show me your glory. It didn't work again, God. Show me your glory. Things begin to change. It says, he's abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Now, when you look at that, understand that God is God. But when we turn from our ways, God is willing to love and forgive. Amen. 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 Let's go a little bit further. Presence and power. Presence and power. Without God's glory, we will never have his power. And at the same time, the power without the presence will destroy a person. It will become an enemy. So we must have the presence with the power. The glory is given as long as a person is faithful. So it's not just going to God for a moment and saying, God, anoint me. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You ever, you ever met somebody that just wants something from you and you never hear from them again? <laughs> You're like, man, I blessed that person last month and, and they, I, are they not returning my phone call? You start to feel some kind of way. I know it's not just me that is ever. You, the next time they come around, you got a little attitude. How you doing? You, you don't want to be real with me this morning. You want to pretend like every, oh, praise the Lord. I love you. And you love me, praise God. Oh, no. <laughs> so, the power is the gift that we receive as a result of the glory of God. So, a person can lose the glory and keep the power. And we talked about Samson. His hair was cut. He lost the anointing. Mm -hmm. But he still had the power. Did it destroy him? Was that tragic? Can you imagine if he had turned back to God, how much more God could have used him? Let's go a little further, and we're, we're almost there. So the world's definition of power. Anybody ever seen the Star's original series, Power? Mm-hmm. Lord Jesus. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Sometimes we'll be so spiritual and then come on right out of Yes! I love you, Lord. So, so power, power is an American crime drama television series. Uh, and it tells the story of James St. Patrick Omari Hardwick. Mm -hmm. Amen. A ruthless, intelligent drug dealer under the street named Ghost who wishes to leave the criminal world to pursue legitimate business interests. One of the things that's so interesting and fascinating when you look at it is the world's definition of power often leaves us confused and powerless. Mm -hmm. Because how are you going to be ruthless and intelligent? How are you going to be a drug dealer and trying to run a legitimate business? That sounds bipolar to me. You, you try to avoid police capture, but your marriage is crumbling. I'm like, you need to just come to church. <laughs> but that is the world's definition mm -hmm. of power. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. When we understand the power that comes from God, you get to keep your marriage. Amen. You can operate a legitimate business. Uh, amen. So simply put, the anointing is God's power. It is the manifestation of the result of his presence. So Amen. as we prepare to, uh, to, to wrap this up, I want to give you one more quick promise. Is that all right? Amen. It says, you shall be my what? Where? Where else? And where else? And where else? Let's be honest. How many of us have limited God? I can't do that. I really, I just, I just, you know, I don't even, I don't even know that person and they look scary, Lord. They look really mean. 
But when you seek the anointing and you're in the presence of God, you operate with an authority. You operate with a power. Amen. You operate with an ability that doesn't come from That's right. you. Because when you understand, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about what God wants to do in our life. Amen. Who is it about? Who is it about? Now say it like you mean it. Who is it about? Yes. Hallelujah. So there's a special empowerment that comes as a result of missional purpose. When you seek after your purpose, then you seek after the anointing that is specifically related to your purpose. And finally, just in case you thought you weren't included, God is no respecter of persons. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit both on the day of Pentecost and in Acts 2 and on the church in the 20th century has demonstrated God is no respecter of persons in regard to gender. And the Apostle Paul clearly declared in Christ Jesus there is neither male nor female. Hallelujah. Yeah. So whatever limitations you put on God, understand those are the limitations you put on God. Amen. 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 Let's take the limits off. Let's take the limits off. So this morning as we prepare to, to wrap up, I want to uh, have us all stand for just a moment. And I want us to take a few moments and I want us to, uh, I want us to really just think about the presence of God. The presence of God. Let's just take a moment and be in his presence. Some of us really need to experience God in a special way today. And before you walk out these doors, it is important for you and I to connect with God. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your compassion and your love. Father God, as we think about the anointed, give us an understanding of how to remain in your presence, how to seek after you, how to hunger after you, how to hunger after your glory, to place that above all. Whatever it is that we brought in with us, whatever burden that we brought in with us, Father, we release it now to you. We release it now to you. I said we release it now to you. Everything. Everything. We lay it on the cross before you. And we thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for lifting the heavy burden. We thank you for encouraging the heart. We thank you for lifting the spirit. We thank you for returning joy. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for the community of believers. We thank you for missional purpose. We thank you for breakthrough. We thank you for every blessing that you have bestowed on us this morning. And Father God, we declare that the fire is returned. We declare that the joy is returned. We declare that we are charged up. We declare that we are equipped in a new way. We declare that we are ready to go out. We declare that we are ready to be used in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the blessed name of Jesus. And we give you glory. And we give you Somebody shout amen. amen. Let's give the Lord a hand break. Family Community Church of Fresno is empowering millions of people around the world through dynamic preaching and teaching, humanitarian aid, and many other ministry efforts. For additional information and resources from Family Community Church, please visit www.familycommunitychurch.com 
or call 559-323-5002. We love you and look forward to serving you in the kingdom.